In my lifetime, the landscape in St. Martin has been altered. I've seen it happen through natural disasters, whether it's a hurricane and the storm surge coming in, or through development of hotels and other forms of construction. Wanting to capture those changes is really important to me. So my name is Deborah Jack. I'm a multidisciplinary artist that works in photography, video installation, and text. St. Martin is 37 square miles, so the relationship between the land and the sea, there's a level of intimacy. So many of the images that I grew up with were seeing images of St. Martin through that lens as a place of escape for entertainment and recreation. But I've always wanted to have this sort of clearer line between the culture that you package for entertainment and the culture that's more of a lived memory and history of the people. As part of the Soros Art Fellowship, I plan to work on a multi-channel video installation. So my project is going to incorporate interviewing the elders on St. Martin. My family in St. Martin goes back several generations. A lot of times we take it for granted that the stories our grandparents tell are just stories that we keep within the family, but that that is also an archive and that our family histories are a series of archives as well. My goal is to sort of tell the stories of the people of St. Martin. It's really about using the archive of the people themselves and their memory to construct our identity and our notion of who we are as a country. St. Martin is part French, part Dutch, um, and so, but you know, the inhabitants of the island, we consider it one. I think the relationship between our colonial powers in St. Martin is one that has shifted over the years with the increase of climate change and the hurricanes and the force of hurricanes that have hit the island in recent years. You know, you sort of see this sort of grab, a power grab, a way to control government through funding, through aid that's needed to help rebuild the island. And for me, that ends up being something that's sort of like highly problematic. For this project, you know, interviewing the elders and then having that footage stay on the island and be placed in local libraries and local museums in spaces where the public can have access to that information is really important to me. I want us to look to small islands as places to help find solutions for climate change, the way we live, the fluidity of how we have to move. For the island, there's an edge. There's only so far that you can go. And this isn't a limitation, I think it's a richness. Lessons can be learned from these types of spaces as well.